hi there welcome to this channel today on this video i want to talk about something very very special and new and as you know on this channel we talk about language and culture so today i want to talk about culture in a very special way today i want to talk to you about not really talking but just narrate to you about the culture shocks that i experienced as a lawyer woman or a lawyer girl married in a luo home and of course if you're seeing this face for the first time welcome to the channel my name is nekesa doreen and on this channel i do teach people how to speak the luya language of western kenya specifically the marachi sub dialect and i also narrate the cultural practices of the luya people that i am familiar with so without wasting time, let's start the video already. I don't know why I've never shared this with you. I don't know. Guys, why have I never shared this with you? I mean, of course, that is the background of how this channel began. That is the background. I'll tell you after this break. So I'll take you back a little bit. The reason I started this channel is because when I got married in Luoland, for those who don't know about Kenyan tribes, let me give you a background information. Kenya is a country that has more than 40 tribes. Apart from Kiswahili, which is the national language, and English, which is the official language, we have other tribes. So each Kenyan, for example, myself, I speak English, I speak Swahili, and I also speak my mother's language. Not really my mother's language, but my father's language. So there are so many tribes, more than 40. And Luya is mine. So the language I teach here is Luya, and one of the Luya languages that I teach. There are many Luya sub-tribes, again, under the large Luya tribe. And the Luya they form the second largest group of uh, the second largest tribe of people in Kenya after the Kikuyu people or if you like you can call them the Agikuyu people and myself I got married in Luo land Luo is also another tribe but of course Luo doesn't have sub tribes so Luos can understand each other but Luos sometimes may fail to understand each other so I went and got married in Luoland. And that is why today I have this channel where I'm teaching the Luya language because when I went there, I was shocked with the culture of language that I was always out of place. And that is why I said, if there is somebody who wants to marry a girl from Luoland, or somebody wants to marry, uh, who wants to get married to a um, get married to a man in Luya land they don't have to go what to, they don't have to go through what i went through they can come to youtube and learn some basic Luya. they can learn some basic marachi and they will be good because when i went to youtube i found some amazing luo channels and most importantly i found the channel called luo english dictionary where there's this man who teaches us luo along with his two children it was amazing because that is the channel that taught me the little law I speak today. So I thought, why not do that for the lawyers? Because I didn't see any channel of the lawyers on YouTube. That is the background information. And that is why today, now, I want to share the culture shocks, the things that shocked me in Luoland as a lawyer woman married in a law home. Traveling from my home to where I'm married is about Mm, how long about four hours five hours on bus around that time so it's far it's far given that in Luya land people used to get married a walking distance from home so um, it's really weird when i told my mom it was like um when you know me of course that translates as uh are there no more men <laughs> and they said anyway let me now get into the thing and tell you about this culture shock the number one culture shock that I experienced as a married lawyer woman or as a lawyer girl 
married in a low home is the culture of language 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 i'm telling you guys language that is a very 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 serious culture shock i don't even i mean that is my greatest that was my greatest challenge and it's still a challenge till today but at least things have gotten better i used to be i used to be I used to be out of most conversations, like 99.99 .99 conversations. I was always never part of them. I was never part of any conversation because, you see, Luos are not like lawyers. If you come to Luya land today, of course, I'm talking about the 20th century. I'm not talking about the 19th century. I mean, I wasn't born. I was born in the 20th century. And right now we are in the 20th, 21st century. So if you come to Luya land, people are considerate <laughs> i'm not i'm not saying this to maybe be little or just that is just how laws are i mean i've gone to laws events i'm going to laws homes and laws are just that way they are not considerate when it comes to language they don't care whether you understand or not they will speak to you in that they are swahili if they know if they're if you're lucky to find especially if you're interacting with old people, if you're lucky to find that they can speak some Swahili, you're lucky they'll speak to you alone. But when they are as a family, like my family, my I mean my in-laws, they only speak to me in Swahili. And then when they are talking, they are conversing, they switch and I'm just like left. I'm just left like, I'm just like, a, I'm just like a loner. Like I used to sometimes cry because I was always left out of most conversations and it was not easy it's not easy being in a place where you know language is just culture language is culture so if you are locked out of most conversations then it's just you're just like a child you're just like you don't even belong there you, you're just out of place because imagine people are talking you're eating and you can't be you can't make yourself busy because you also have to eat with them you're eating and people are conversing in their language and they don't understand and they laugh you don't even know of course i was not worried that they were talking about me that was that was the list of my worries my worry was being left out people are talking people are laughing and you're just there i mean you're just there like a zombie you don't know what is going on you don't know what they're saying people are it's hard it's really hard being in a place where people are speaking a language you do not understand especially if you live in the same home you live in the same house and when i told my husband he told me you either get used to it or you yeah he told me that that is how life is here and if you have decided that you want to stay here then that is how life is if you come to lua land guys if you come to lua land people are very considerate they will speak to you in swahili and they will try to switch the conversation and speak kiswahili so that you can understand what they are saying they will rarely leave you in conversations i mean they will rarely leave you like just hanging all the time they will try to speak a language that you also understand and it will not just end with the introduction and that is it because for me it only ends at the introduction even today it ends at the, at the introduction unless of course i am with my younger siblings in law at least for them, they speak Kiswahili and we can also converse in English. But the others, the elders, oh my God, it's usually tough. But that pushed me to learn the language. I can now converse. I can hold, I can catch a few words here and there. In fact, I made a video about uh, lower language, how to call, how to say colors. Some told me that it was all wrong and yeah. But I, I don't really care because at least I was learning. Right now, I can follow a conversation. If you speak slowly and if I know that it is me you're speaking to, then I can talk about the basics in the Luya language. I can tell you how to eat. So eating, we say chamo. You're eating food, you say um, cham, 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 hold cham and eat. And the language is it's a bit tricky, but... I'm telling you, at least I can get it. But that is not the only language culture shock. They will also do that everywhere, even in my house where I live. They will come and they will leave me out of place, not just in the villages, everywhere.
they will speak and they, they don't even care. I mean, they don't care. I don't know, but that is something that I've, have, I've had to deal with. So if you are looking for a law and, hey, just prepare yourself because they'll just leave you out of, out of, out of place. Even in events, even in events, I remember I attended a friend of mine's um, aunt's burial. The aunt had passed on and I went for the burial. I'm telling you guys, I floated. I didn't understand anything from the start to the end. They were speaking in law. And it's not like people were, they, they are landed, they are intellect, and they, they were just speaking in law throughout, throughout. So that was my, my main like shocker of all shocks. Of course, I knew the language was different, but I didn't know that they are not, they are inconsiderate. <laughs> to this extent, but I'm healing, I'm healing. So if you're here and you want to get married in Lowland, just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Unless if that family is the family that speaks English and Kiswahili, then you are lucky. Otherwise, you will come and I will, you will come, you will come for a hug. The second culture shock that I experienced as a lawyer girl living or married in lower land is the housing system. The housing system. The housing system. I was so surprised that in lower land, the word Simba. You see, in Luya, the first house that a son builds in a home is called Isimba. And in lower land, it's called Simba. Simba is the first house. Whether it's a 30 bedroom house, it's still called a Simba. Whether it's a 50 bedroom house, it's still called a Simba. For us, a Simba in Luyaland is the first house. So if you build the second house, whether you're building it in the home or outside, that is not an Isimba anymore. Sometimes I'm surprised when people keep calling Simba Simba. I mean, this big house, you're calling this big house a Simba. Simba are supposed to be those small houses where that only fit a bed and maybe a chair. Those are the ones that are called Isimba in Luyaland. So I used to feel like Simba, this big house is called a Simba, but they told me that Simba is the very, very first house. Another thing that shocked me about housing is that the, 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 the boys of the home, let's say if you are, the, if you are, if you are born like uh, three sons, so the first born, they, you can, you can, when you are unmarried, you can sleep in each other's house, but the firstborn cannot sleep the secondborn cannot sleep in the firstborn's house if he is married let's say like my my, my husband is a secondborn son so when we went visiting there he didn't have a simba yet so he had to sleep in his brother's house and his uncle refused that we cannot sleep in that house it is an abomination we can't sleep in his elder brother's house oh my god we had to go looking for our, our house we had to we had to borrow a house, you know, borrow. We had to borrow a house so that we can sleep in. And it was, it was, it was, it was a shocker to me. I mean, it was a shock for me. I feel like if you have an elder brother, you can sleep in his house. I mean, he's your brother, right? He's your brother. Of course, in Luyaland, there is the way houses are built. But the issue of you sleeping in your elder brother's house, it's your house. You can sleep there in, with your wife. In Luyaland, it's very okay. You can you can have the same house and you have wives and you're living in different bedrooms as brothers. It's very okay. So I was so shocked when I heard about this idea or this thing of housing and brothers and what in Luoland. It was very, very shocking to me. Very shocking. Another culture shock that I saw in Luoland is the culture of molding houses you know these molding houses where you get clay and you mold instead of cementing if you don't have money to cement you mold like you mold with clay and not clay but just sand sand mud mud and cow dung so i was so shocked that when i went to lowland i realized i don't know maybe i'm wrong that is why i'm calling this my experiences the culture shock that i experienced you might have experienced different things or you might be living in a different kind of Luo set up home or these things might not be a shock to you as a lawyer but for me they are a shock so these ideas of molding houses you see if you if you come to lawyer land and you find somebody you see you see the way the houses are built 
like the first the first um <coughs> the the mud houses we put the sticks to act as the the wall where we are going to put the the um the mud to act as the wall then we put the mud for the first time and then the second time and then now we start using mud mixed with cow dung on the wall and on the floor in Luo, in Luo land i didn't see such a thing unless of course I don't know. I didn't see such a thing if there are houses that have been built and they're just like that. I don't know. I used to think that it's laziness. You see, like in Luya land, if you have such a house that has not been smoothened, that the, 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 the mud, the, the, the outer side, the outside mud has not been smoothened, people will say you're lazy. So you really have, people have to, to mold their houses every other time. If it, if, it, it, if it has holes, you're going to keep molding and molding and to keep it new and fresh, both the floor and the wall. But in Lowland, uh, in Lowland, I worked in, as I walk, walk, walking through many homesteads, those who have, who still have houses that are made of man, they just do it the first time and the second time and that is it. They don't even smoothen it. It, it was weird for me, like, I mean, are these people this lazy? And then I realized, then I noticed most houses are like this. People didn't, people don't really, I don't know, maybe they don't have the mud, I don't know. I don't understand, but I notice most houses are like that. Maybe you can tell me if it is different, if you're a low and it is different. But as in Luo land, in Luya land, if you don't mold your house smooth, people will look at you as a lazy, a lazy person. You're a lazy woman. I mean, you have a good house and you can't even mold it. If you can't afford cement, then mold with mud and cow dung. So that was very shocking to me. I look at, at houses and... The, 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 the mud is coming off and I'm like, really guys, you ran out of mud? <laughs> but anyway, that was a culture shock to me. Another culture shock that I experienced as a Luya girl married in Luoland is the dowry payment system. Whew, this one shocked me. I was shocked that in Luoland, if you're going to pay dowry, you can sleep at the girl's home. I mean, really? Hey. In Luyaland, there is nothing like that. In Luyaland, the, the, the in-laws are not allowed to sleep in the in the girls' home unless, of course, it is the the mothers, the the mother in the like if my my, my mother-in-law and my mother my mother-in-law can sleep in my where 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 I was born. That is okay, but not my husband sleeping where I was born. I mean, that is weird. But for them, if they are going to pay dowry, they sleep there. <laughs> How do you, I was so shocked, like, I mean, how, how, how do you sleep in the same home with your in-laws? In Luya land, it is unheard of. Another thing that shocked me is that you can go with your sisters. In Luya land, you can go with your sisters to pay dowry. Sisters, I mean, hey, me and my brothers, like me escort, escorting my brother to pay dowry. That is weird. Very weird. Very, very weird. In Luya land, People who go to pay dowry are elders and sons alone. Women are not included in that msafara. That is it a convoy or a motorcad or a foot cord? Foot cord. Motorcad, foot cord. People who are going on foot. How do you call people who are going on foot? Anyway, I'm confused. I'm, I'm not I'm not serious about that. But anyway, I was so shocked when I was informed that men sleep can sleep in their in-laws home not necessarily the same house but home and ladies can escort their brothers to go pay dowry hey i was surprised another thing that shocked me about in lowland about dowry payment is the way they pay dowry and this one it, it, it i loved it i mean i loved it i, I have never thought of it this way you see in lowland and correct me if you're a low and i'm wrong because i'm just talking about my own experience in lowland if you are paying dowry for your wife you pay if of course there is cows and um, money you pay cows a goat and money so the cows are paid to the to the of course in in, 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 in luya land also the cows are paid to the man but in lower land the cows are paid to the man and the money when it comes to the money the mother is given more money compared to the father and that is just how they do it the mother is given more money like even triple the amount of money the mother is the, 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 the father is given and their reasoning is the father is given the cows belong to the father that is their reasoning which is also true in Luya land but imagine in Luya land 
the cows belong to the father and when it comes to money the father also gets a lot of money compared to the mother that is if all your parents are still alive in rural land the cows given to the father and the money the mother gets hey my mother was so shocked when she got that <laughs> she didn't believe it <laughs> She didn't believe that all that was hers and she had been given more than my father. You know how the, the way the status is run, the father comes first and the mother and the children. So I love that, baby. I love that because at the end of the day, the cows belong to the father and now the mother has more money, which is a good thing. I love that and it really shocked me. And when my husband told me, I was like, let's do this, let's try this. I mean, I love it. I love it. Let's try this. I mean, we are combining culture so we can do yours and do mine. And yeah, 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 yeah. We can do that. It's, it's really good. We can try it. And it, my mom was so happy. Okay. I don't know how my father reacted, but I don't know. But that is cultural exchange. Because I love that about that idea of dowry payment. And then the religious lives is another thing that shocked me. I was a lawyer girl married in Luella. The religious lives i came to learn that in luya land the religion is different not really different like different per se but there are aspects of religion that are different in luya land and in luo land where i where i was born we we are we are neighboring a luo a community my county is busia county and we are bordering siaya county which is just a stone throw actually you can even walk to siaya county and i've realized there are some um, cultures that have been copied across from Luoland to Luoland and Luoland to Luoland, vice versa. In Luoland, in Luoland, where I was married, is a bit far, like I told you, like around five hours drive. It is a bit far, and I realize that there is more of, tra the, of course, the Christianity is there and Islamic is there. But in Luya land, there is the, 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 the percentage of Islamic is higher compared than in Luya land and the percentage of Christianity like um, Roman Catholic and um, the Anglican Church and the Pentecostal churches is higher compared to in Luya land. In Luya land, I realize, of course, we have churches like the Roman Catholic, Pentecostal churches, but the Adventist is high. And also, we also have traditional religions kind of like not really i don't know are, are they really traditional but i've not seen those religions in luya land unless those deep 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 but i've seen those religions in luya land those they are those we still have the traditionalist like yeah kind of religion in more in luya land compared to luya land like somebody comes to you and they are of this religion that you've never heard of and they have practices and they're like hmm I'm just used to <coughs> Catholic and Protestants in Luya land. But of course, in Luya land, we also have traditionalists. But I can't compare the percentage of traditionalists in Luya land and Luya land. So that actually shocked me because somebody in, Lu in, in Luya land, somebody just has a church. Somebody just has a church, like a church that was founded by their great grandfather. And that is, it is a... <laughs> It is a, it is a, it's not, it's a family church and everybody has been worshipping in that church. It's, there is such kind of thing. If you are a law and you're watching this, kindly tell me, tell me about this religion thing. Another thing that shocked me about, um, when I went to Luoland, when I got married in Luoland as a lawyer girl is their burials. Their burials are, of course, they're similar uh, things, but their burials are kind of, they're kind of different because about language they speak exclusively almost exclusively law like when my mother came to my my father-in-law's burial my the brother to my father-in-law's burial they spoke law throughout and they had to keep themselves busy because they were not understanding anything they were not understanding anything and in real land usually they say they are guests from where and where are you be considerate when you're speaking of course they have those old uh, mamas, old mothers who are who cannot speak uh, Kiswahili, so usually they try to translate so that everybody can understand. Especially if they know that you do not understand the language, but laws, laws will just be there. Like they will just speak their language, and they don't care where you've come from. <laughs> they don't care. So that is how different their barriers are. 
another thing that I realize is different with their barrios is the way they approach natural phenomena. Hey, this one, if you come to Luya land and you have a ceremony like a barrio, let's say for example, and it's raining, you can stop that rain by the way. <laughs> and that leads me to another point, rainmakers. I don't know whether there are rainmakers in Luya land, but hey, Luya land, there are rainmakers. I mean, you cannot have a big event like let's say a burial of a big person or um maybe just a big event and it's raining heavily and rain is pouring on people ah uh, no 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 no. maybe after burial in luya land such things rarely happen if it's raining and you have money or you have you have enough cattle or you have enough chicken to slaughter you just go give the rain maker it will stop the rain <laughs> i know it sounds weird but it happens like i've literally seen it happen i've literally seen it happen in fact I'm going to make a video about rainmaking in Luya land. You just have to talk to the rainmaker, give them something, and they will stop the rain. They will hold the rain for the period you people are having that event. In Luya land, you just get rained on. I don't know whether these people are in Luya land, but the ones that I attended, of course, from my experience, you just get, we got, we, we got rained on like, it's raining. It's raining. In Luya land, it's very possible. Although sometimes it happens, but I've seen in most cases, if you have an event and it's raining, the weather is not so good, you can talk to the rainmaker and the rainmaker will play with their pot, will look in the sky and will utter some words and the rain will stop. You have to be very good to them. If you make a mistake, <laughs> if you make a mistake and you don't give them their due, they will release all the rain in with all the with all the thunderstorms and all the hailstones and everything and everything. So that is a culture shock that I experienced in Luya land because in Luya land, rainmakers are present and they still work and it actually work. Of course, I know about stopping rain. I don't know about bringing rain like when during the drought, that is totally different. But when it comes to stopping rain, they can actually stop rain. <laughs> I don't know what they do. I've never seen what they do, but I've seen as a young girl growing up in Luya land, I've seen these things happen. It's raining here. In the next village, it's not raining because there is an event and they pay that person. But it's a big person who has died and yeah. Yeah. Another thing that shocked me about the Luas as a Luya girl married in Luya land is their clan system. In Luya land, we are called by our clan system. I asked about that and they told me they don't have things like clan. Everybody is called with the name of where they come from. Like if, you, if you come from, if you come to Luya land where I was born, my clan is the clan of Ababere. Ababere. Ababere, written as Ababere. And the women are called Nevere. The men are called Ababere. So everyone is identified. My mom is Vuivo. And my grandmother used to be at a four for you. So you see there are different clans and the clans we have, the way men are called, the way men are called. In Luoland, there is no such a thing. You are called by the name of where you come from. Like myself, if you go to Luoland and you're a Kisi, the Kisis are bordering the, uh, the Luos by, is it? It's side, compass direction, I'm put it. If you go to Luoland and you're a Kisi, you will be called Jagot. If you're a man, if you're a woman, you'll be called Nyagot. Got is a hill. So you'll be called someone from the hills. So myself, they call me Nyamalo. Malo is up. You get it? Malo is up. So if you come from up, because Lowland is near Lake Victoria and Lake Victoria is a lowland. So if you come from where I'm married to where my home is in Busia County, it's a bit, it's like you're going uphill. You're going like the, 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 the sea level is, you're going above, <laughs> above the sea level kind of. So they call you, you, you come from like, when I talk at you, you come from up, so Nyamalo. So if you're a man, you'll be called Jamalo. A woman, you'll be called Nyamalo. So, if you come from Nairobi, Luos will call you Ja Nairobi. And a man, you'll be, uh, that is a man, and a woman will be called Nya Nairobi. So 
they just take your name they just take your place where you are born where you come from like there are those i come from busia there are those who call me nya busia nyar busia the lady from busia or jar busia the man from busia or somebody can call you, you can you can if you're coming from siaya for example they call you nyar siaya if you're coming from let's say uh, places like mombasa they'll call you nyar mombasa so you're referred to by where you come from if you're a lawyer and you're watching this video tell me do you have clans like us in lawyer land do you have clans like us there are so many culture shocks that I experienced, but in this video, I only managed to share with you those ones. Tell me in the comment section below if I said it wrong, but don't worry, that was my experience, and that is how things went. Tell me if your experience was different. You can also tell us if you married somebody from a different country. That is, hey, that is a totally different story. I don't even want to go there. You married somebody from a different country from a different tribe from a different like completely different culture tell us some of the culture shock that you experienced not even just marrying but visiting that you experienced watch out for my next video that is coming about the culture shocks i experienced in the land of agikuyu i studied in Agikuyu land in the Kikuyu land as a law and I'll be sharing some of the culture shock that I experienced. Meanwhile, you can watch about the eating culture of the law, <laughs> the eating culture of the lawyer people in this video here. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a subscription. Click down here, it's free of charge. Subscribe and like, and don't forget to come back watch more videos it was so fun making this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching bye